fighting appears to be escalating in Syria. Government forces attacked rebel strongholds and a massive suicide bomb killed dozens in an area controlled by the regime. The bomb went off near the headquarters of Bashar Assad's ruling Ba'ath Party, killing more than 50. No one claimed responsibility, but government spokesmen blamed the rebels. The army struck back against rebel positions in Aleppo and Damascus. Dozens were reported killed, including a soccer player who died when government forces shelled a stadium. Tony Badrin is a research fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He joins us now uh, from New York. Thank you very much for joining us. First off, almost two years into this, is this uh, lingering sore being addressed properly? Um, absolutely not. I mean, right now, the way things are headed, we are headed towards, with the current policy, uh, towards the, po the worst possible uh, scenario. Uh, what that means is that you will have a rump Assad regime uh, backed by Iran with increasing Iranian interference. Uh, that will be based mostly in the coast and central Syria and uh, uh, the capital of Damascus. Uh, on the other hand, you have uh, a sort of fragmented uh, parts of the country in the north and the east that are controlled by uh, increasing numbers of, uh, of uh, militias from the Sunni population, some of which uh, have, uh, you know, are, are, are Islamist and opening the door for more, for more radicalization. So the current policy opens the door for the worst possible strategic uh, endgame in Syria, whereby Iran maintains its alliance with, with the Assad regime in reduced form, and the rest of the country falls into utter chaos. Syria used to have uh, incredible influence over Lebanon. Is it becoming the new Lebanon? Syria and Lebanon, uh, in many respects, are very similar in terms of being fragmented uh, uh, and deeply divided societies. Uh, Syria, in particular, historically, does not have really a, a history of, of nationhood, uh, let alone of being a, a unitary state for, for very long. Um, so right now it's kind of devolving into its, its historical state of being uh, a series of buffer zones um, uh, like we see right now in the north, uh, m looking more towards Turkey uh, and to the east, and now uh, maybe on the coast that will be an, essentially an Iranian and possibly a Russian protectorate as well. Uh, the world community, does it have its uh, hands tied or hands uh, in its pockets? I would say the latter. I mean, it has willfully tied its own hands simply because they, uh, the international community, and specifically the United States, and specifically the President of the United States, does not want to get involved. Uh, as you know, f uh, four of his top cabinet uh, advisors uh, that have now uh, all left have all advised him to interfere and on the side of the rebels, arm the rebels, and have a much more robust leadership role. Uh, but the president has, has shot them down, and this has repercussions also on, on the rest of the world as well. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, approaching two years into this, is this uh, a stalemate? Does, does anyone have an edge in, in this? Um, right now, it's, it's almost like a stalemate. Uh, the rebels are making uh, incursions, uh, but, uh, but again, still in the north and in the east, uh, w uh, and they're consolidating their grip there bit by bit, whereas the regime uh, is uh, kind of fortifying itself on the coast and, and in, in the center of the country, uh, and fighting now increasingly a battle in the capital of Damascus. Now, this, this area of the world is a, a tinderbox for, for tensions. Have, have neighboring countries been destabilized by what's going on in Syria? The most uh, hit country so far, the worst hit country, uh, I would say, is, is Lebanon right now, simply because uh, the, uh, the most powerful actor in Lebanon, which is the terrorist group Hezbollah, mm -hmm. uh, has, uh, being, being obviously a proxy of, of the Iranian regime, has entered the battle uh, for months now on the side of the, of the Syrian regime. Uh, and uh, the, the more they do so, uh, they're, now they're attracting retaliation uh, onto Lebanon from some of the rebels as well. The others, like Jordan, uh, have been hit mainly by a large number of refugees. Turkey uh, has been hit a little bit uh, uh, with more than just refugees because of, uh, because of tensions uh, and, and, and uh, missiles that have been shot near its border or on its border. Mm -hmm. or, uh, so they, they, they have uh, also witnessed it a little bit, but nothing so far that, that really destabilizes any of these countries. Um, so the, the most, the most uh, uh, you know, in danger is, is Lebanon, obviously, because it's the weakest state of the moment. In the meantime, the horror on the ground in Syria continues. Uh, Tony Badrin, a research fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.